No, fall, don't fall. Okay, fall, fall, fine, whatever, whatever. I hate all of you. I have a stack of books so big to talk about. I don't even know how this happened. Hello, editing Monica here. Come to interject to say, I realize that I have something stuck in my teeth for like all of this video. So if that bothers you, I'm so sorry. I, it bothers me too. And I do brush my teeth. I promise I brush my teeth. But you know what? I had just had some pistachios and I hadn't brushed my teeth after the pistachios. So if that bothers you, just ignore it. You know, I don't know what to tell you. I promise I have good hygiene. Just that there was something stuck in my teeth and it really bugs me, but I'm not about to film this whole 30 minute video again because of it. So enjoy. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel when reads where I talk about books and things. Now this video has an intro because I really want to talk to you about something that's going to happen to my channel. Basically, I've been struggling lately with my channel and it's not because of lack of ideas, it's not because of anything except lack of time to really bring the content that I want to bring to YouTube. So I found myself with a conundrum, if you will, of what should I do? Because the reality is I started my channel back when the pandemic hit and I was working from home and I was working half the hours that I work now. And again, I was working from home. So if I had like an hour between classes, I could just film a video, upload it. You know, it, it was very easy. But now I'm out of the house from nine to nine. And when I get home, even though sometimes it's daylight, I do have a artificial light that I use, an artificial light source. I don't have the energy to put into the videos so that they're as good as I want them to be. So that left me with only one thing to do, and that is lower the amount of videos that I post per week. That also means that you're gonna get more quality videos from me instead of just getting like random videos that I just throw together because I, I have to post something and having this schedule where it was just too much work. I was turning this into my job and I don't even get paid and I'm not even sure that I'm ever gonna get paid. Not because of like, oh, am I ever gonna be a good booktuber? No, it's just an issue with me and um, Google. It's, it's a long story. But the point is, I just don't want to make this not fun for me because if it stops being fun for me then I start to wonder what's the point and I don't want to make videos that's the problem like it it got to the point that's why I took a three month break because I just didn't want to make videos anymore I was tired I was annoyed I didn't want to do it so what did I do I took a break and then I came back and I thought okay I can film videos on the weekends and so on and so forth and then I realized that I am so tired from working 40 plus hours a week you know sometimes I'm working up to 45 49 hours a week and I just don't feel like making content. Not only that, but I also have to keep up the reading process because, you know, if I'm not reading, then what am I gonna post about, you know? Yes, I could do tags, I could do this, but I want, I want my channel to go in another direction. Like, I don't wanna just post sit-down videos all the time, even though I'm still gonna do those, but I wanna go more in like the video that I posted this week on Monday, which I will link up here actually. <laughs> I will link up here and I will link it down below where it's more if of a reading vlog where I give you my thoughts on the books because I read so many books in a month that again, doing wrap ups as fun as they used to be to just talk to the camera for 47 minutes about the 18, 12 or 20 books that I read in a month. I just don't have the time or the energy to do that. And I also think that it's so much more fun when you're seeing my life reaction to a book. You know, it's like, I think there's something so like intimate, it sounds weird, but <laughs> yeah, so intimate about that. So I just want you to know that my channel's gonna be changing up a little bit. It's okay if you don't wanna stay, it's cool if you do. It's gonna be more vlog style videos instead of like this, I hate to use this term because I'm not, I don't want anybody that does this to feel like, oh, you're just filler, you know, you're not doing the real stuff, you know, but for me, how I was seeing it, 
I was doing a lot of filler content just to get content out, just to be able to film it all in one day. And as you know, my videos usually are not short videos. I like to really talk, I like to really get into it, get, you know, I, I like talking, surprisingly, for somebody that doesn't like to do it in front of other people, for me to do it in front of a camera, it's not a problem. And for me to talk about books that I love is something that I really, really enjoy. So, I think I'm gonna change the format to, I, I kept saying kind of like Books and Lala, where she takes like these five books, she reads them in however long, and then she posts a video about it. That's what I wanna do, more or less. So, sometimes you're gonna get one video a week, sometimes you're gonna get two, maybe three, I don't know, you're gonna get weekly videos. That's what you're gonna get, weekly videos. Now, how many of them? I'm not sure. Maybe I see a tag I like, maybe I see something that I like. Maybe like today, I wanna recommend half of my shelves to you because my, it, I'm going to recommend you read half of my shelves right now. I just want you to be aware of what's happening with my channel. I'm not quitting, I'm not going anywhere. I think we need more science fiction readers on booktube because there's a lot of sff readers but they focus more on fantasy always which just grinds my gears because i know i know fantasy is great but i just don't like fantasy so um yeah i think we need more science fiction readers and i think i'm one uh, one of the people that reads predominantly science fiction so i wanted to bring this video to you and I just realized that I forgot two books. They're right behind me. I'm gonna get them. All right, now that that's done with, let's get into the meat of this video, which is science fiction that is accessible and that is easy to read for people that might not be into science fiction but want to dabble a little bit in it. And I think these books are the perfect books for you. Now, I'm gonna start with some old favorites because, I, okay, I'm not gonna mention Do You Dream of Terra 2 or Born because if I keep mentioning those books, you're all gonna un unsubscribe because those are the only books I talk about ever. So, I'm gonna talk about some other books. Some of these you've heard of before some. I don't talk about much, but I'm gonna start with um, The Search for Wandla by Tony de Terlitzi. Now, as you can see, this is my beautiful annotated edition. I love this book so much. This book is about, it's a middle grade book, but don't be, I, 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 I think a lot of people see middle grade and they're like, oh, that's not real literature, you know, because what the fuck is even liter real literature? But anyway, um, this is a middle grade story about a girl named Eva Nine. Eva uh, lives underground with her robot mother and she has always dreamed of going to the surface because on the surface there's supposed to be more humans, you know, they're, they're on planet Earth but she's supposed to be learning how to survive so she can survive in the surface. Then through certain circumstances that we're not gonna get into, she actually gets to the surface and she realizes that she might not be on Earth. How on, how the heck did she get here? Why is she here? And she goes on, she goes on a epic journey to find her Wandla, which is her home. And then you'll, you'll find out why it's called the Wandla. This book is amazing. It's heartfelt. It's really like, it read, it really, this reads like an adult book <laughs> with a really young protagonist. There's a lot of um, adult themes touched on here and I just think this just flies under the radar because a lot of people are like, that's middle grade. I don't read middle grade. Well, get on that train and read The Search for Wondla by Tony de Terlitzi. It's one of my favorite books of all time. You see, I have another copy here, which is the hardcover, and then I have this cover. The next book that I want to recommend to you is the Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. Now this is a very strange tale and this is not for everybody. I'm gonna say it now, this is not for everybody because this is very slow. This is kind of Kazu Ishiguro, never let me go slow. Where we, we're, we're in this town where slowly we start to forget things. People forget, for example, a camera. I see a camera, but I don't understand what it's for. I don't understand why it works. I don't understand anything about it. So I just forget it and discard it. And it doesn't just happen with cameras. It happens with birds. It happens with butterflies, flowers, pictures, everything. And this book focuses on a young woman 
who finds out that her, um, I, I think it's her editor, is somebody who doesn't forget. And these people are usually rounded up and, you know, taken somewhere and things happen. We don't know what happens, but things happen. And she decides that she's gonna save him because she thinks that memory is something that is important to keep. This book is gentle, it's slow, it's low on the sci-fi. I basically just told you all the sci-fi that you're gonna see in the book. And it's a beautiful story. There is a little bit of nah, with some cheating going on here, but overall, I just think this is such an amazing book and an amazing read. And I know for a fact that my friend Sarah from Vo Voyages Through Tomes likes it and she only reads fantasy, so. There you go. Sarah endorsed it. So I think this book is just amazing. I, I can't get over it. It's so good. And it's just so gentle. I love books that are gentle like that. And the next one that I have is one that is sort of like that too. The next book that I have to recommend to you is Good Morning Midnight by Lily Brooks Dalton. Now, Sarah also <laughs> didn't like this book at all. This book is slow. You don't know what's going on half the time. Half the time, most of the time, you have no idea what's going on. But for me, this book, it did get a little like boring toward the middle, but the end of this book is just. This book is the story of a group of humans that are in the, the Arctic Circle doing some investigations and then a uh, helicopter comes and he's like, Listen, something's going down, shit's going down, we don't know who's gonna survive, this is the last chance you have to get out of here. And everybody's like, yeah, we have to go home to our families, except one man and a little girl. They stay behind, we don't know what really is happening to Earth. And basically, he's just trying to survive. And then there is another part where it's these um, astronauts were sent to Jupiter and they lost contact with Earth a while ago and even though they were very happy at first to you know be able to study the moons of Jupiter now they're really scared because they don't know what they're going home to or if there even is a home to go back to so we've got possibly the last humans left on in the universe because you know they're not even on Earth and they make contact now this book is so good. <laughs> it's just reading about regrets, about life moving on and, and, and you realizing what you've done with your life and just analyzing where you are in life and where you could have been had things been different. And what a better setting to think about that than basically the end of the world. It's a beautiful book, I highly recommend it. I know that this is not gonna be to everybody's taste, but if you like contemporary hard-hitting fiction, then I think this book is for you because the, the sci-fi, again, I basically told you all the sci-fi that there is. There's not a lot more, that's just it. And it's just so gentle and beautiful. And the end, I was in tears. I was like sobbing when I read the end, so. I hope you enjoy it because this is one of my favorite books that I read last year. Now, if you want to get into a little bit more of a classic book, but you don't want to do the whole Dune thing where it's like this big and you know, you don't want to do whole space opera thing, I recommend that you pick up Solaris by Stanislaw Lem. This book is about a group of astronauts that are studying a planet named Solaris where the ocean is acting a little weird. They have decided the ocean is not sentient, but it's also not non-sentient. It reacts in strange ways um, to touch, and they're studying it. And, well, our main character is a psychologist, and he gets a call from one of the crew of this planet, and he's like, hey, weird things are happening here. Can you please come here? Because I think we really need a psychologist. And from there, shit hits the proverbial fan, okay? It gets really intense. Sometimes it gets a little bit boggled down by like fake history of stuff, but I just think 
again, it's just for me, it's the ending. I love the ending of sci-fi books. It's just incredible. Um, this man goes to investigate, and this is kind of a first contact sort of thing, kind of, sort of, and also acceptance of your past. Again, that theme of accepting the things you have done, where you've been, and why you are here. It's so good. Um, strange things start to happen, and they are trying to decide if this planet is basically trying to communicate with them like if the whole planet is sentient i just think that this book is amazing it's really short and i think it will capture your attention however i don't recommend this um edition this is actually one of the worst translated editions if you can find another edition i would recommend that i think the one from kindle is actually better this one was translated by joanna kilmartin and steve cox Apparently not a very good translation from everything I've heard. Also, let's forgive again the heat sticking my hair to my face. Next up, I have World War Z by Max Brooks. Now, these, this is a sci-fi for those of you that like a little bit of more uh, political intrigue in your lives and also a little bit more zombies in your life. <laughs> this is, of course, the story of a zombie outbreak, but it's told as if it were through files and you get more of the political side of things instead of just a survival story about zombies now i have to admit this movie this movie i was i was reading major motion picture this book is not necessarily um my cup of tea because i really like following one character i'm a very character driven reader but i just think that a lot of people that you know don't want to read about aliens or about going off to other planets and things like that i think this will be a good beginning for that and it's just a fun book and also the audiobook is amazing i totally recommend that you go the audiobook route because this is, has a lot of interviews and stuff like that that i think you are really going to enjoy i promise i just have like 20 books left speaking of people that don't necessarily want to go the out of this world kind of route I have also Vicious by A.V. Schwab. This is my only V.E. Schwab book that I like except for her middle grade books. Um, this is a story about two young men that are brilliant and are studying genetics. And they find out that you can get superpowers if you die and then are brought back. However, this seems to also mess with your psyche a little bit and one of them goes a little vigilante on us and the other one um is his arch nemesis and the book the way the book is told is like a countdown to them meeting up for their final um big battle and it's incredible it's so good and it's such a low sci-fi that i think that anybody can like this because Really, the sci-fi aspect is just that, superpowers. And I think that that can go, you know, either way. And the characters are so well written. I think V. Schwab is at her best here. And I fully recommend this book. Of course, I recommend all these books. There's like 30 of them here. So let's keep going. Next up, I have Moon. Next up, I have Moon of the Crusted Snow by Wabeshi Rice. Now, this book is again very low on the sci fi aspects, but it's just there enough so that you can get a taste of it. Now, you're living in a reservation for First Nation peoples in Canada, and you start to get the feeling that something is going wrong. Something they, they don't have lights all of a sudden, but that's normal. And then suddenly the water stops running and they have to ration the food. And this is basically a post-apocalyptic story told through the eyes of Native American people living in a reservation secluded somewhere in Canada. This book is amazing and it plays off one of my favorite, favorite historical, I guess, monsters, which is the Wendigo. And I don't want to say anything else. I don't want to say anything more that will like spoil this book for you, but it's just basically, basically a post-apocalyptic book and we don't get all the answers, but we get a lot of really cool character interactions and I just really recommend that you pick this one up. 
also pick all of them up i'm not i'm gonna stop saying that i recommend that you pick this book up because you just should pick them all up again for the for the zombie fans i have the girl with all the gifts by mr carrie now this book tells the story about the world after we have been basically taken over by zombies and we're working in a lab where little children are infected with the virus but they're able to act normally and they're trying to like find a cure or something until again shit hits the proverbial fan and this turns into a road trip survival zombie feast <laughs> i didn't know what else to say this book is really good it, it is a little bit bigger i think it's like 400 something pages 460 pages it, but it's it's so worth it it's so worth it i remember when i read it this i should have included this in books that grew on me when i read it the first time i actually didn't like it that much but when i reread it i was like i love everything about this i love the zombies i love what they did with the idea it, the their pandemic situation is different from anything because you of course you get bitten and you turn into a zombie but also there's um fungus is it fungus yeah mold that grows and the spores is like what infects you and i thought that was really cool and really original now you thought you had enough of pandemics did you well you didn't because there's station 11 by emily st john mandel again the sci-fi aspect in this is really simple it's just the whole it's not simple it's not easy but it's the idea that um we lived through a global epidemic it was horrible it was devastating many people died and what happened uh we're reading from the past from when the pandemic hit and also in the future where we are trying to survive after a few years of having lived through this and i think that this is a really good book to read in this moment we're following a troop of actors and in the past we're also following a few actors models you know stuff like that that refuse to give up on their art even though this horrible thing has happened this book is really i mean i think you've all heard of it i don't have to say a lot about it but it's really beautifully written and i just i just love everything about it i love the idea that you would refuse to give up being an actor even though there is no more tv to show off or you don't get any money out of it you're just literally going around little towns and and then there's like this whole like sect like a uh, cult thing going on and i just think that this talks again it's that whole thing about regret and about hanging on to the past and it's just so delicious to read that's it it's delicious to read all right i'm only going to talk briefly about uh the long way to a small angry planet if you want to get into space operas but you don't really want to get into too big of a political thing and you really like found family i recommend that you read the long way to a small angry planet this has been described as feel good sci-fi for a reason however i also want to recommend um a record of a space form born few which is in the same world as this one like they're, they're companion novels but this one is actually my favorite this one talks about immigration it talks about so many current things but wrapped up in this sci-fi world and also this one all of them feature um different kinds of relationships just it her imagination becky chambers imagination of different ways of life is just incredible so i recommend that you pick up the wayfarer series if you want to get into a little bit more of spacey sci-fi and if you want to get into aliens like because i know like the idea of aliens and reading about aliens just puts people off sometimes but i think if you read these books you're really 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 going to enjoy the portrayal of aliens because they seem so natural <laughs> you know and they're different enough where you're like okay that's an alien but not different enough where you're like Ugh, that's kind of boring or and they're not trying to kill us because that's the other thing usually when we have aliens they're just trying to kill us and that's just kind of boring the martian have you read the martian i guess most of you have but if you haven't don't be scared off because of all the science in this book 
Mark Watney is amazing. Mark Watney makes you feel like you really wanna be his friend. <laughs> He's the most positive person that I've ever read about and in case you don't know, this is about a man that gets stranded on Mars and the world has to come together to get him back. Again, very low on the sci-fi, very high on the emotion. I think that that's what this all is, like emotion heavy sci-fi. So I'm not gonna talk a lot about this one because I talked about it already and I have two more books that I wanna show you. No, actually three more books that I wanna show you that really like I wanna talk about. <laughs> about these two books together and these two books I read in July so I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a July wrap up or not because I read a lot of it in a vlog which I will link up here if I haven't already linked it but I have Satellite by Nick Lake. Satellite is basically the story of three young young people that were born I'm gonna put this one down for now that were born in a space station and they have been told that when they're 16 they're going to be old enough and their bodies are gonna be strong enough to return to earth and then they do and it doesn't go as planned it doesn't go as well as planned now the thing about this book is it's written in text speak and that turned me off so much the book but once you get used to the text speak and you actually read the story, you, you, you actually read what's happening, you, you're gonna fall in love with all three of the characters, especially Leo. I just think he's such a beautiful character. He is such a nice representation of what it's like to be queer, what it's like to fall in love with someone that probably is not in love with you. You know, it's very, it's a beautiful book and it just, breaks my heart in the most beautiful way and it's about believing in yourself and believing that you can do better and and, and and trusting your gut and also it deals with grief and in a way that I really needed to deal with at the time that I read it. I just recommend that you pick this up. If the text speak bothers you, listen to the audiobook but I just I couldn't get enough of this book. There was a, a part in the middle in the second part where I was like well this happened so what now? But then I was like, oh, oh, this is what now. Satellite by Nick Lake. I gave it five out of five starts and it's amazing. And going on with Nick Lake, I also read Nowhere on Earth and it says the author of Satellite. This is the story about a girl that finds an alien and her job is to get this alien back to where he belongs, which is not Earth. However, this alien has a very interesting power to take the form of something you want to protect. So is she really protecting the alien because she wants to or is she just protecting him because he's manipulating her? Also, this talks a lot about the difficulty. I think this is a coming of age story. This is definitely a coming of age story for a young woman that whose parents want to give her everything but everything that they want to give her might not be everything that she wants. And it's just very beautiful to see the family dynamics. And, and it's just, I want to see this turned into a movie. Um, and it's it's got a very much Stranger Things vibes. It's got E.T. vibes. But it's just really, just a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful read. And I, I'm so happy that I picked this up because, yeah, this is awesome. And again, this is something where if you don't want to, this is kind of Lovecraftian, by the way, with the way that they describe aliens. But in general, it's just more about the adventure than the alienness of it all. <laughs> like, than the, than the extraterrestrial bits. And I don't know, I really loved it. I think that you will enjoy it too. Finally, we're gonna get to another middle grade, I know, so sad I ended it on a middle grade, but that is Orion Lost by Alistair Kisholm. This is the story, I think I, I have a vlog of, of me reading this, but this is the story about a group of teenagers that are put in charge of a ship after everything goes wrong and um, the parents can't wake up. And I really like how the children are portrayed in this book. I think that if I was in their situation, I would be the same way. Like like their first task is to try to wake up the parents like that's that's how teenagers would react in this situation 
and also there is maybe this thing with the AI and the AI might be working against them and lying to them about what is really going on this book is amazing and it's such a good way to start you off on a space opera because it's again it's accessible it's easy to read and it's I think this is more YA than middle grade really and it's a lot of fun that's it it's a lot of fun and it's so intriguing with the whole mystery of is this um ai lying to us and why is the ai lying to us so i just recommended 14 books for you to read to get started with science fiction if you don't know where to start and if you don't want to start with dune because let's face it not everybody wants to start with dune because dune is a really big book and also i tried to steer away from more classic sci-fi because i feel that classic sci-fi really has aged you know like we have cell phones now and everything so it's it's aged and i think we could do with some new blood and maybe you'll find something you like here so yeah that's it that's the video for today i hope you enjoyed it um and i will see you in my next video thank you so much for watching really it means a lot to me thank you so much for watching and i will see you later bye